RWP is brought to you by Porch Beer Entertainment. Every every place I've been to in this, I, I tried a new place. So I've been going to Charlie for. I went to Charlie in college. Right. Took a break from it when I when I lived in Manassas. I went to this this girl named Rose. She hooked me up, okay. and then I went back to Charlie. Um, and then a barbershop just opened up right across the street from me. So it's like, I, I mean, I could walk there, but I drive. Right. Um, right. And it, it looks brand new. They just opened it up and everything. And that's, that's the, risky, though. A, new, a brand new barbershop. Yeah. And well, I just I was in a pinch, too, because so I officiated my sister's wedding. And right. so I was getting my haircut for that. And I was like, I we had to like leave in like 30 minutes, and which I'm glad we did because we got stuck in like two and a half hours of traffic. But I was like, oh, I'll just go here. I'll test it out. It's really not that hard because I like I know exactly what it's I. It's a asked very for. simple cut. It is shorts on it, the sides. Let the let the spike up on the top. Uh, it, it sort of spiked today. Um, you used but... to do uh, you used to do very spiky. It was like mm-hmm. you used to do the the moose or whatever, and you would like put it all in the hair straight up, yeah. And then you do the messy look. Now it's you gotta, now like it's more like off you, to the side. Yeah, now you do a little more peaky peaky blonde and, type look. Um, <laughs> But every every time I've gone to a new place, or like Roosters, when I went to Roosters, yeah, they would always like kind of look at my head, and I thought like I was getting good haircuts, and they're just like, "Who cut your hair?" And so I tell them, and this new guy was like, he like he was the owner of the shop too. Um, he was like looking around my head. He's like, "What do you know?" Roosters or the new place? The new place. Okay, but got it, got it. this is like the three times I've switched, they've all asked me where. But every I've time my you haircut. go to a place, they always yeah shit on the previous haircut. Well, and he's looking around. He's like, "So where do you get your haircut?" I was like. Charlie's but what are they seeing fair. that's so bad? I don't know. <laughs> like, I was like, what is, I was like, are there Charlie's? scars in yeah. the in your skull that well, were? Missing? I mean, like, because I can't see the back of my head. But yeah. I was just like, I was like, Charlie's down Fairfax Station. He's like, Fairfax Station. Then he said this random like place that wasn't Charlie's, and I was like, <laughs> okay. I was just like, yeah, sure. And he's like, mm, yeah, they 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 don't do a good job there. And I was no, like, Charlie's see? is historic. Yeah, it's I'm like sorry. known for good hair. Charlie is the man. Yeah, and so every barber is just like this person while he was cutting my hair, absolutely shit on my last haircut, wow. which was from Charlie's. But I was also just like, damn, dude. And I told him what I wanted, and then he did it. But then was like, are you sure you didn't want it this other way? <laughs> Why would he say it at the like, end? So I do, I do all the way around here and leave the top. But I do right. like a hard line. And he's like, you might want to fade it. I was like, I've been getting it faded there. I, I think it looks a little dumb. And he's just like, it would look way better. Uh, and I was like, no, uh, like, it's fine. Just cut my hair. He I don't like that. the guy arguing with you about your own well, hair. It's like, the whole thing who, was what like, does he care? The whole thing is, as soon as he did it the way I wanted, I was like, awesome. I like said, thank you. Yeah. And then he's like, man, it just would have looked better with the fade. And I Why was like, he oh, care so much? God. it's your hair. You're the customer is always right. I was like, are you for real right now? Like, I love how he says it after the fact, too. Like, it's like, mm, oh, you made a mistake there. <laughs> what would he say like, to wow, the Wow, you're, you're going to walk out uglier than you came in. And My... so that's what I was just wondering, because that literally just happened to me. And you saying the whole So I've had the same stories. woman three times in a row. At Roosters. Uh, at Roosters. It's the same one that caught mine, right? I think so. I think the yeah. one where, like, the her coworker crapped on her on the haircut she gave you or something but yeah. she's been really nice i i go like every i mean it, I, I i wait a long time in between haircuts but i went today how long do you normally wait like three months or something like i wait a long time well, i'm on like a three week cycle three weeks is insane no, it's, it's just, that's just I, my crazy. hair grows really fast i mean so does mine but i i got my haircut but they only and it was great I, I don't have like a giant scary story to say all i can say is though at one point though you got the mask on and then you've got the 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 black smock or whatever they put on you and mm-hmm. then you got the lights i was starting to get the sweats a little bit yeah and i was starting to get a little worried because i was like because once you start thinking about sweating that's when you start sweating more and oh, i was yeah. like i'm only wearing a t-shirt too so i was like all right is my back gonna start sweating on this leather seat because it's leather or the, seat or the butt sweat yeah for black sure black smock and then a mask which isn't necessarily like something that makes you that hot, but no, it's you're still, an anti-masker. Yeah, it I restri- got it. no, it restricts your breathing. <laughs> and then like, and, they, and the I was gonna ask because one time there I was sweating like a pig, and I asked like, hey, do you guys mind turning on the AC for me? And they did you, one time. You asked them to turn, to turn on, on the, the AC. AC in the building. This was last year. Yeah, I, last year. Whenever I go into a barbershop, I'm never hot. It's always very I was cold in there. So hot. I still sweat while they're doing it, but yeah. like not as bad as now. Luckily, you, I don't think. But 
I wonder if she noticed, and that's why she sprayed water on my head because maybe she was like, to, "All right, to the hide water, the fact, the to water, help her be able to touch exactly." Your She's head. like, "It's not sweat; it's water." <laughs> like it's a commercial or something. Um, that was my hope, but she's super nice. I mean, great place. Shout out to Roosters and Herndon. Uh, well, they I'm not gonna say ones, great. They were place. the ones who cut my. Uh, Let's say oh, fine place. There, I mean, it's it markets itself as like an upscale barber yeah, lounge. Yeah, it's the same haircut I could get anywhere. Let's be honest. And it's just way, it's just more expensive. Um, but I, well, the first one of the first times I went there, I was wearing my face mask at Roosters, and it was my favorite one. And um, they're doing the thing behind the ears, oh, but they no. cut my face mask cord, and then they were just like, "Can you just hold it?" The rest of the time, like, yeah. I'm and this is at the to. very beginning of the cut, right. so I had to spend the whole haircut. Just oh, holding my arm must like, have been gonna, dying. I was like, I see a box of disposable masks. You can just give me one. Right. A hundred percent. And then we won't have to do this dance because I'm just sitting there like having to move my head around. It was, yeah. it was weird. I don't like that. I don't like that. No, luckily nothing. No, no crazy mishaps. It was. And then the sweat died down a little bit. But I will say one thing. And this is like it's, it sounds like I'm doing like bad stand up right now because like every Prop comedians probably joked about this, but the well, problem with haircuts. The, the, no, like the communication with the barber, like it's all one of the few places where you will go. Like for example, we had some small talk at the beginning, and then we didn't speak for like fifteen minutes, yeah. and then randomly she was like, "This traffic, huh?" And then like we got into a conversation again. But it's the only situ- social situation where like you'll go fifteen minutes without speaking to each other, and it's perfectly normal, but yep. it's also still a little awkward. Oh, it, it, for sure. It's because it's like I would have been fine process. with talking with her if she had brought if she had started a conversation. Like I was going to respond. I wasn't going to shut down. But like I don't want to bring up the conversation. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, what are you going to like cut a lot of hair today? Yeah. Like, well, I was going to ask that. That was one of the questions in oh my, my mind. God, was like man. about how many people you guys typically get around here or something. <laughs> Jesus, uh, asking them their metrics. Yeah. But I didn't ask. I didn't ask. But we talked a little bit about traffic because she commutes from Gainesville, um, mm-hmm. and she said the traffic is getting worse. And I was like. I feel you. I understand what you mean. I don't travel from Gainesville, but I I I was about I live about five minutes away. But yeah, I get it. There's probably a lot of traffic. There's like a stock set of six things you can say about any area, and traffic is <laughs> definitely one where it's like if someone how just are the got, schools here? Like, <laughs> like if <laughs> if you're stuck with somebody waiting, and like maybe it's like a mutual like mutual friend where it's like a friend of a friend, and like you're both just sitting there waiting for the common link to get there. The first thing, anyways, is like, so how's it like drive up? You like you know you hit a lot of traffic. Oh yeah, it's really pretty bad right on that ninety-five exit. The weather, yeah, is always a topic of conversation. Man, it's sure hot out here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I know. I found myself doing that small talk on the phone, like in meetings, which is even weirder because that's something you do in person, right? And like, it's perfectly fine just to stay on mute. But there are people, and I've done it a few times, where just like the volunteer stuff, where they'll be like, it's just so quiet that they're just like, so uh. Yeah, you know, how's the weather over where you oh, guys are? Oh, the pre-meeting, like where, where people are oh, joining, but like the main person who's leading it isn't there yet. So everybody's on, but nobody's talking. That is that is horrible awkwardness. Mm-hmm. That happens all the time for us because our CEO is always late to like Zooms or whatever. So the entire company will just sitting there just on the Zoom, just like kind of looking around. And I'll always be laughing. Oh, look, you're standing up. Um, are you? Is that a particular? No, keep going. You're fine. Yeah, don't where, worry. where are you going? <laughs> Just okay, there. grab it. Go ahead and grab it. We're still remote, as you guys may realize. Um, it's just easier to do the show this way, uh, being in, in separate places. But now Salty Dalton has got his microphone set up. So hopefully the sound quality is a little better for this episode than last one because um, he's got the microphone set. I was the set. sound quality so bad. Figured, it wasn't it. bad. It was okay. It was fine. It Was Was just it like, like first year RWP? Second yeah. Year? I, I'd compare okay. it to first year, like very early RWP episodes. Did you move uh, all the episodes over to Anchor? Yeah. Yeah. Everything should be up there. Yeah, so you should be able to hear every every single episode. Um, by the way, people, we'll, we'll be having a fun one here today. We're going to be doing... Uh, oh, I yelled at the Podbean people, and they were like, yeah, we've created a ticket for you. Uh, you and, like, um, and then they emailed me again, and it's just we've been going back and forth. And I was like, they were like, well, the thing is you have to completely erase your account with us to get refunded. It's like, that's fine. And easy. I was like, okay, easy. I literally went and did it. I was like... I was like, all right, my accounts are moved. And they're like, well, what account are we supposed to refund this against? And I was like, you've got to be shitting Yours. me. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking right now at our well, they're like, Well, they're like, well, your account isn't active anymore. And I was like, you just told me to delete it. 
God. And it was just that. back and forth, but it's with billing now. So hopefully. All right. Hopefully you can get that because, yeah, we, we are on Anchor. We will soon be sponsored by Anchor, uh, probably after this episode. So your next episode, you'll hear us do a little Anchor ad read um, next next time we record. But not for this one. It will be the next one. Um, on today's episode, we're going to be getting into some TV show information, some history and other conversation. Hey, Arnold. A lot it? to talk about. A lot to talk about. We'll, we'll, but let's hit the intro, and then we'll uh, then we'll get started. Oh, this microphone smells horrible. Oh, dude. What do you, What do you mean it smells bad? It smells bad. Okay. Well, then it's because of you. No, I mean I don't know if this was your mic or my mic. It wasn't. Have, my I have mic. two mics here. I wasn't mine. It was clearly. I don't know, dude. It kind of smells like probably something. from popcorn or something. Um, what right. am I rubbing popcorn Three, all over the microphone? Two, ASMR. Excuse me. Three, two, one. Hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome to last week tonight. Welcome to the Random Word Podcast. We are back for another episode. Better than ever. Better than ever. Brand new type of show. We we now we oh they're still going. Thank you guys. Please, please. appreciate it. Um, are you all wearing masks? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we we are. We don't believe in that here. We're educators here on this show. As we did last week with the human body, rave reviews for the human body cast. Did we get uh, rave reviews? Yeah, I mean, at least a couple people heard the show. So I can't, I cannot stop smelling this microphone. <laughs> well, that's right your own fault. In front of my face, it smells like fault. cheese. Okay, well, it wasn't me. I didn't, I don't eat cheese in front of you. So I'm not it saying that it's happened. directly cheese. It's just okay. like a cheese adjacent smell. Okay, well, again, it was probably your microphone. You probably ate Cheetos, and then you uh, talked into the microphone, and now the sound is apparently captured and stuck into this. This is this is called a windsock. A windsock. In case you, in case you didn't know. Uh, but well, no, those things are at those things are at airports. Well, that no, this actually is, catch the wind. Yeah, but that's what this is. It's catching your breath. Um, <laughs> follow the Instagram, the Random Word Podcast. And by the way, email the show. We've got uh, some emails for Call Center later on that I want to discuss, but that'll be towards the end of the show. But we got History of TV and some other stuff here. So, Salty Dawn, since we're talking history, I figured we might as well bring back this little intro. Because while it at one time was called... What, Salty Dalton's brain orgasm or something? <laughs> well, I don't think it was that. <laughs> it was something like that. Uh, Salty Dalton's magical brain explosion, fun time, something. Something along those lines. And this time it'll be, it'll be my turn. All right. We got a little history lesson for some people. This is, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the history of TV, Salty Dalton. The history of TV itself. Of television, yes. Okay. What did you think I said? I, I was just asking. I'm just. What other thing could I'm I try to be said? a co-host here okay. and volunteer? Like, oh, so oh, being a co-host just means the history of being a co-host just means questioning everything I say. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, providing like easy softball things for you to answer. That's what so I basically just set you up by saying you're telling us the history of you TV. You asked me to repeat and you were myself. Like, yes, television. <laughs> Repeating isn't a softball. Salty Dalton it is after a softball because no one else understands the context. After World I just War feel like II. You, you don't appreciate me. After World War II, TVs began heavily being sold. Um, and so in you're the jumping mid- right into World War II. In the mid-60s... Not, I'm not even gonna... talking about the creation of the television. Oh, no, 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 not a deep dive. Uh, in the mid-60s, color TV was introduced. Um, in the 60s, okay. In the 60s. And then here's kind of the interesting transgression, transition. Was there was discretion? <laughs> there was Betamax and VHS. So it was like it used to be this battle between VHS and Betamax, and it was like who's going to win this battle? And obviously VHS won at the time because VHS like, like is in the VHS tape. Tape, yes. So it went from VHS. Oh, I remember Betamax to okay. hard disks, to DVDs, to yep. flash drives, to Blu-ray, to DVR, and then now streaming services. So. I, re- I mean, the DVR is something that... Do you even use a DVR anymore? So the only time... And I feel like... So I know... I want to say up until like 10 years ago, I actively knew people that still TiVo'd stuff. Right. So it was like DVR and TiVo were synonymous, depending on what TiVo, service you had. God, I, have, I forgot yeah. about TiVo. Because you could skip the commercial blocks and stuff like that. That was, was the like, whole thing. That was the whole pitch of getting a yeah, TiVo. Even though with the DVR, you could just fast forward through the commercials. So right, right, right. Saved right. you an extra 15 seconds. Right. But I, we did DVR a lot of stuff when it came out. So like... Because you would look at the guide and you would oh, go Oh, it was awesome stuff. when it came out. It was like, wait, we don't have to watch things live. We can record them and rewatch yeah. them later on. So we would do like 
uh, you know the the tv shows that come on at like nine or ten or yeah. stuff that we weren't actively or sports, sitting down like watching. you can't yeah. catch the game all oh, right yeah, i got yeah, it we... on dvr i got yeah. it on tivo don't don't spoil the score i got it on tivo that's what we used to say uh, up, in, up in new york <laughs> i think my parents still use a dvr uh do they do they you should ask them if they actively still like they do DVR episodes no because i was have at, you showed them netflix i was at their house no they, they have, have netflix, netflix? Okay. they have netflix so I what are at, they not getting on netflix who live television like hgtv or something probably oh okay you know uh and then blu-rays came along remember it was like all right you got your dvds and then you got these blu-rays and then you had to get a blu-ray player in order to play blu-rays but for us, since we were PlayStation guys and Xbox guys, Salty Dalton's in, in the forest. Oh, you got to get a good background going. Well, since we were uh, PlayStation guys, the, it had a built-in Blu-ray player. I feel like it could play Blu-rays on the PlayStation or something. I feel like. Wasn't that the case? Yes. No, no. The, yeah. P, the PS3. Was so that was also... the whole thing is we didn't need to get a Blu-ray player because we could just play yeah, it on the PlayStation. Yeah, because it was also because it was Blu-ray compatible or whatever. Right, right, right. Um. And then the big the big jump, <laughs> I know you're not being able to see this on, on audio version, but Salty Dalton's in space right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the big jump was standard def to high def TV. That was like yeah. like getting the first, because, and they, they still probably have this, but I remember at one point you had, in your channels, you had standard, standard yeah, def of everything. That. They still have that today. And high def of everything. Who's watching <laughs> standard definition television? That's true. I mean, because like. people probably. Well, now they have like TV channels that are just available. Like you don't need cable to get like right, the right. set, you, you, whatever. YouTube TV or whatever. Yeah. No, no. Like on your TV. Oh, like, you, you mean the ones where you're like super basic? Yeah. Like that's NBC, Fox, yeah, like, CBS, where it's like all you have to do is like plug it into a wall and you get. Yeah, that. but like before that, because we also had the satellite dish at one point. Well, in college, we didn't have cable. We we had cable, but I feel like there was like we only got a couple HD channels in college. I feel like. I feel like I feel like most of the channels we got in college were were standard def, and then we got like a few high def. But I could be wrong. Yeah, because that was just like the basic. Like, yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's not like yeah. we're paying extra, and the college isn't going to give that. In two, 2013, so this was eight years ago, 79% of the world's households owned a TV set. So that was 2013. Of the world? Of the world. Oh, wow. Okay, that's impressive. 79%. That's a lot of TVs. So I'm, my, my wonder is, so that was eight years ago. Do you think that number is more or less? Because now you don't necessarily need a TV set, I guess. A lot of people consume stuff on their mm. laptops, you know? I would probably say it's more. And I don't have the answer to that question. I did not prepare that information. I, th- I think it's more. But, I mean, most people have been using... I mean, I watch Netflix on my phone all the time. You were a big phone show watcher. Mm-hmm. Like... In college, I remember you doing that a lot. And it was always kind of strange to me because the screen is just so small. I just don't see how you can enjoy it. I mean, it works. And I did that because, like, I would go on the shuttles and stuff like that. So I spent a lot of time on buses and trains. But the battery, the battery life. No, yeah, phone. sure. But I mean, Ben, you have a battery in your pocket 24 7. If it drops below 80%, <clears throat> you're already charged. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. No, I just leave it charged. No, I, I would bring like a, a battery thing with me to charge. But yeah, it does kill your battery. But like, you know, I would just watch stuff while I'm. So that's the thing. It's like I wouldn't consider that a TV set, so I don't know about the number. We'll see. In 1941, the first TV ads are aired. Salty Dalton. The first official paid TV ad was broadcast on July 1st, 1941. Oh, it was we should before go look at that. A baseball game between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Philadelphia Phillies. The ad was for for uh, Belova watches. You remember huh. Belova watches? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. What I that feel is. like maybe. Uh, I feel like that's such a weird thing to make an ad for. For watches. It's strange that that would be the one. That that would be the first one. I don't know one. if you've seen the one commercial. It pops up on, I think it's mostly on Hulu, but I, there's a few of these commercials, like the perfume ones that I got fired up about that made right, no sense. Right. There's this one for like watch companies don't really have a lot of commercials. So like, it's not like a, cause like nice watches, I feel like are a very niche thing. Yeah. Because cause most people, people just have like fitness watches now. Or, or like you can get a G Shock for forty dollars, right. or right, a right, Timex right. little, you know, small. I feel like the the, the idea yeah. of getting like, like a nice Rolex is weird. not as interesting anymore. Well, no, it's just like it's like if you have 
an extra grand to throw around, you can get like an amazing watch. But I'm also just like, it's it's just a watch. Like yeah. it tells you time. You have it on your phone. Like you can but see like, the time. There's a commercial where it's just like this one person, this girl, like firing off like eight lines in a row. It looks like that they were just like trying to find the right one for the commercial where she's just like sitting there. She's like, you know, I was born at 11 or 9 a.m. on this date. And she's like, that's probably the earliest that I've ever been up. And then it like cuts, hard cut. What? And then she says something else. And she's like, you know, uh, everyone worries about the minutes, but it's the seconds that count. And oh, like, that's deep. And then it, it cuts again. And she right, she fires off like four of these lines in a row. And then it just flashes to the actual watch company logo. And then that's all. What kind and of watch was it? I don't know because it, it, it wasn't up <laughs> there long enough. It was just she was just like saying things, and she wasn't even wearing the watch. It was just like she would just say these deep things about time, and then that's all. And it makes me very angry. Well, we got to find the it. ad for Belova watches from nineteen forty. I would like to see that because that's that's just a weird thing to be like the very it's first a good thing, trivia thing you're you know. ever going to broadcast is now from you know. watches. Not now even you know. like milk. This milk well, that's brand the thing. Or you listen like to that. like. Uh, Old radio shows, yeah, they used to promote uh, like different type. Th- like there was this one type of drink that I feel like they would promote a lot, and then like Jello and stuff like that. Like it was, it was a lot of like strange products that they would promote. But Belova watches, apparently, I'm going to tell Belova you the watches. these are the ten biggest live television moments of the 20th century. Okay. And for this, we get a little so uh, the 1900s. Uh, yeah, that's what 20th century, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what that means. It's um, always one behind. I'm going to tell you the... All right, this is the 10 biggest live moments of the 20th century. I was going to try to have you guess, but that might be tough. I'll let you Uh, you have a stab at it. So this is live TV moments. So moments uh, that happen live. Justin Timberlake and uh, the... Janet Jackson. So that was in the, the 2000s, I think. So oh, I've, that was. No, no. Okay. So we're thinking we're in the 90s. Not 90s. We're in the 1900, uh, 20th century, 1900s. So um, g- give me a guess. Give me a World Series. Uh, specific first. moments. Well, World Series is not a bad guess, actually. Uh, but that is not one of them. Think of, like, big moments in the in the world. In the Berlin history. Wall falling down? Berlin Wall is... Uh, is one of the list. Yes. Okay. That is on the list. Uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Okay. Uh, y- you're on a roll. You're on a roll. Here we go. Come on. I, I am not a crook. Uh, Nixon. Watergate. There is. Yeah. Nixon resigns. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yes. That's two. Okay. That's two. Okay. That's two okay. of the ten. Um, come on. Right. Come on. Come on. You can do this. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm, jo- it's like I'm at the barbershop. Jonestown Flood. Jonestown Flood. Don't know what that is. Oh, jo- it's like. Jonestown was a pe- okay. That's not a flood. You said Jonestown flood. Yeah, the flood killed like hundred people. It wasn't a flood. It was the Kool Aid. They were drinking the Kool Aid. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? Are you- <laughs> I'm talking about Jonestown. The people, oh, Jim two. Jones. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, but no. none of that's n- neither one of those is uh, on this um, list. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. You got think, two. Try to think. Try to think. Uh, think of okay. Uh, let me give you a hint. Uh. Let's see. Think of this. This involves sports, but it does. It's not a. An, uh, it's not a, a specific game, but it involves an athlete, a pretty famous athlete. Tiger Woods. No, ni- this is this happened in 1994. Famous athlete it might involve a vehicle. A vehicle and somebody maybe with a similar last name to me. <laughs> Oh, O.J. Simpson. Yeah. O.J. Simpson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know Simpson why that escaped my memory. Yeah, because that happened Bronco. on live TV. They were. It did. Uh, other ones on this list here. We got the Ed uh, Elvis Presley's first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. Um, okay. Because cool. that was apparently that was a big deal. Eighty-two percent of the television audience tuned in that night um, to see Elvis Presley. Well, then I feel you like had when the TV first came out, like there were not a lot of programs. So no. The odds are, if you aired it, ninety percent of the population would see it at that time. Yeah, I think it was. There was like really not much to do back then, so I think a lot of it was just people kind of sitting around. Well, some waiting people used for to sit by the radio to listen to the radio shows. Wait and hear what's going on, like our uh, show. The Nixon, exactly. The Nixon Kennedy debates, nineteen sixty. Mm. 
big television moment because uh, I believe Nixon looked like old and like sweaty, and and Kennedy looked young and good. Because I think uh, R.I.P. Uh, yeah, yeah, our, <laughs> to both of them, right? They're both dead, probably. I would think Nixon's dead. Well, right? I know, I know, JFK's definitely Hold no on, Nixon. Man. Richard Nixon. There's no way Richard Nixon is still alive. Oh, hold on, let me see. I like how people come to our show to learn things. I, I, I it's almost a hundred percent chance he's dead. Oh, he died in 1994. Yeah, it was a while back. He was the, born in 1913. Yeah, that's 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 very old. Another oh event. God. He was buried at the Richard Nixon Library and Museum. That's a good place to get buried if your name's Richard Nixon. I feel like. What if every person who's named Richard Nixon got to be buried there? Oh, that'd be pretty nuts. You had the assassination of JFK. Of, uh, I was going to guess that one. It's a good guess. Yeah. You had the moon landing. Oh, I don't deal. know why I didn't volunteer that one. 600 million people watched this uh, worldwide. Um, you had the Nixon resignation. You already said that. The Miracle on Ice. Mm. Um, and I believe, I think it was like, it was a tape delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, what, it was a tape delayed. So actually what everybody was seeing was not, happening live it was actually it happened earlier that day you had the royal wedding of charles and diana um 750 million people watched the wedding of prince charles and uh diana um and then r.i.p one on this list here maybe also prince charles he's pretty old yeah one on this here that i had no idea is called baby jessica apparently there was an 18 month old named jessica mcclure who fell into a well and apparently, two days of like nonstop television updates. She fell into a well in Midland, Texas, and luckily she survived. Like she's okay. They got her. But basically, for like two days, people were glued to the television, waiting for updates on this baby Jessica who that fell, into, fell a well. into a well. 1987, in October 1987. I just feel like, I mean, there are some wells that go pretty deep, but I just feel like well incidents would not should not be that big of a deal because like i don't know maybe it's more complicated than that but it's like yeah it sounds like it probably a is a little more complicated than than that i don't think what do you mean well incidents <laughs> shouldn't I'm, be that big of a is, deal well because like it, not like national television apparently it's like apparently it was if we had remember the technology balloon boy to put some yes i do remember that yeah uh, the technology to put someone on the moon like someone in a well yeah. You should be able to get to them pretty easy. You would think. You yeah. would think. But apparently but I don't know Jessica about it. couldn't. So uh, there's your 10 biggest live television moments of the 20th century, in case you were wondering. Nice. Now let's move on to some bad TV. Some of the worst TV shows of all time. I'll, I'll give you some. We'll go. Uh, this I'll is go, the worst TV show. So they. The worst TV show. So this is going to be too tough. They ran on TV. They weren't like pilots, right? Uh, so they w- would have to at least get like I would say one season, probably. Yeah, that's 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 that would be my guess. So I'm not gonna have you like guess because like no you one. probably haven't seen any of these. But I'll go through I'll go through some of them. So one was uh, number ten. I'll go number ten. Number ten was Uncle Buck uh, on CBS. Critic score twenty one out of one hundred. Oh god. Um, uh, and apparently it was like it only lasted for one season in 1990. And it was so it was it was a TV show based on the movie, I guess, because there's the movie Uncle Buck with John Candy. And I guess maybe they made a TV show about it. Uh, Knight Rider on NBC. Really? So this must be a kit. So this was a remake. So this was a remake. Okay. So they remade it in 2008 on NBC. They did. And it got 21 out of 100 uh, for critics score. Maybe it's the same critics that watched Uncle Buck. Only one season. Only one season. Okay, I do remember the remake. I think I watched one episode. Now we've got, uh, in 2008, there's a show called Mama's Boys that only went one, only went six episodes. Oh, God. Critics score 19 out of 100. It was executive produced by Ryan Seacrest. It was basically... Ryan Seacrest? Three guys and their moms moved into a house filled with potential dates. So it was called Mama's Boy. So it was a dating show. So it was three guys who were Mama's Boys. They moved into a house with their moms. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that's one of the women. worst things I've ever heard of. It sounds great, honestly. It sounds like something I would watch. Um, I'm there's... surprised something that bad didn't get like a cult following. I want to. Fi- I, I gotta find it, it through. I gotta find it. Um, <clears throat> this one is called The Real Wedding Crashers. 
It aired oh. in 2007. Oh, God. Only five episodes, and it's a prank show. What was... Oh, okay. Critics score 19 out of 100. Uh, and I guess it was on NBC. So I don't have much more information. It just sounds like it was a prank show where they maybe like pretended to crash weddings, I guess. Number six is one that I remember, and I want to see if you remember this. Cavemen. Yep. The Geico a, Cavemen got their spinoff. Geico so spinoff. Only seven episodes aired. Mm-hmm. I've watched them all. In 2007, uh, critics scored 19 out of 100. Um, oh, that was such a like those commercial the the fact that a commercial series right gets its own tv show i mean it was an iconic commercial series it was it's like a terry tate the office linebacker right 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 like that was like pinnacle commercial super bowl type advertisements like well yeah and, and with i mean the the cavemen were synonymous with Geico for a while. Oh, yeah. Now I now, now I feel the like lizard. the gecko is. Yeah. 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 Um and but then like, like when did they make that transition? Because I don't like know. Is probably it after the this show failed. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Seven episodes. It's uh this this reviewer said Caveman is pretty bad. It's definitely among the stalest pieces of bread in the loaf, which already includes two and a half men and according to Jim. And it's certainly the most tasteless. Um is uh the Boston Globe said that. Number five Work It, season one on ABC, uh, 12 episodes aired. Uh, I don't I don't know what it's about, but it was on ABC, and the critic score is 19 out of 100. Has anything gotten less than 19? Oh, we're starting to get there. Number oh. four on the list, Category 7, The End of the World miniseries on CBS. Only two episodes aired in 2005. Critic score, 18 out of 100. Okay, one less. So we're getting there. We're getting down there. So Detroit Free Press said, "Here's an early candidate for worst miniseries of the 21st century." I mean, they what is? That. What could that possibly be? Category seven, end of the world. Only two episodes. Did the world end after those two episodes? Because that, that the title itself leads me to believe it's going to be a very short show. Category seven, end of the world miniseries. I want to see if there's like. A... We should watch some of these. I want to see what the what the description of the show is. A deadly Category 7 storm wrecks havoc on the world. Meanwhile, kidnappers threaten to make matters even okay, worse. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm we do need to watch this. There's only two episodes. Uh, who no, is in the, this? The, the meat of what's going on is storm adjacent. Like, there is a bad storm. We've had Category 7s. It's not, I don't know about <laughs> destroying the world. Like, it destroys parts of the world. You got but uh, then it's just Gina like Gershon. Kidnappers. Uh, Gina Gershon was in it. Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid? Oh, he's uh, a national treasure. I guess. But it's the, the Quaid part is spelled differently, so I wonder if this is like a different Quad. Quaid, yeah, it's like spelled weird. Um we, we gotta find that. We gotta find that show. That's uh so that is number So that's uh, eighteen. That's four. Eighteen critics were in number favor three of it, I guess. On our list. Stalker on CBS. Twenty episodes aired from twenty fourteen to twenty fifteen. Critics score seventeen out of twenty. How bad was that? I'm gonna show? look up uh, Stalker and see if I can get some information here. Um, Stalker TV show. Stalker TV show. Twenty. Let's episodes. do Stalker TV TV CBS. Stalker TV CBS. That's a good. That's a good <laughs> way. To, this is why we're a team. Stalker. That's interesting because IMDb gives it seven and a half out of ten, but Rotten Tomato gives it twenty percent. Ooh. It just says... The Maybe Lost... it's Go ahead. I was just going to say, so Stalker is an American police procedural drama about victims of stalking. Okay. And the detectives of the LAPD's threat assessment unit who investigate the crimes. Interesting. So... So basically just... What's so bad about it? Law and order, but stalkers? It's all stalkers. Wow. And Wikipedia has everything, has like all the descriptions of all the episodes. Or is it based off real events? I don't know, but it says Stalker is chock full of perverted subjects and ugly storylines, making it hard to watch for those who like to watch. Uh, this person said exploitive misogynist trash. Uh, okay. So people did not like Stalker on CBS. That's number three. All right. We well, I guess so, like the, the one thing is like it's a show only based on stalking. I guess not murders or it's just like people watching. People. I guess even for the people that like the weird police stuff. 
I feel like that just gets old. Like Apparently, they didn't like. I wonder what this episode is going to be about. Oh, it's Stalker. Oh, nice. So this one is interesting because I remember this show as well. Number two on our list, Salty Dalton. Okay. Dads. It aired from 2013 to 2014 on Fox, and it had Seth Green in it. Yes. It had oh. Giovanni Ribisi. It had Brenda Song. Had Vanessa Lachey. I mean, so it I was... guess it has to be less than 17, right? Critics. It was a 15 out of 100 critic Ooh. score. It canceled after one season before the final episode even aired. Before the final episode? You couldn't just toss the final one out there? Critical oh, reception. Uh, overwhelming dislike. A rare 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Zero, Zero. Not a single. Oh, wow. A we total, near total disaster. Dads makes the fatal mistake of believing its racist gags can lend an edge to an aggressively predictable oh. writing and unlikable characters. Racist gags? How many? I, guess, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't just... know about the show. But it was uh, Seth MacFarlane produced it too. Like this was oh, supposed to be a good show. Ga- yeah, it had a, it had the potential. I mean, Brenda paper. Song and Seth Green and Giovanni Ribisi. Jeez. And the number one is a show called The Half Hour News Hour, and it was on Fox News, and it was supposed to be the conservative answer to The Daily Show. So it was like a daily show for conservatives, and it got 13 out of 100. Um, So it was a news program. No, it was like like The Daily Show, so it was like a, a making fun of the news, I guess, but... Interesting. I guess it just wasn't funny apparently. it wasn't good yeah it was basically fox news's attempt to create their own daily show and mm. apparently it was so bad that uh it is the number one worst tv show in modern history right after that's, dads that's tough one. so okay. on the subject of tv stuff stuff i wanted because we were talking about this over text was mtv talking mm-hmm. about little mtv shows because they're looking back there were some MTV shows where you're like, how in the world did this get made? So oh, I'm going to th- some throw some names out to ones. you. Gold ones, yeah. I'm going to throw some names out to you. So we got Parental Control. Dude, that was one of the <laughs> greatest. Like, what a, what a wild concept of, like, the parents actively hate the boyfriend. The girl is willing to go on other dates with other men while... All of them watch. All of them the sit in a room, room with the parents. So and a girl the, and was like, the, they'll just be talking shit. Like, oh, yeah, the whole yeah, time. Open the door for her and just like, it was just, it's wild. So a girl was to interview five boys and after a set of about five questions for each person or an activity of some sort. Also like getting to know someone that quick. And then the father eliminates one of the contestants. And then this continues until one contestant remained. And then basically... At the end, the person decides whether to break up with their current boyfriend or girlfriend or to go start dating the new person that just started. Yeah, it's it, it it's buck wild. Like that is insane. Could you imagine doing that? Like like let's say Abby or Ashley like has to <laughs> I mean it's just go crazy. out on a, another date with a guy and then you have to sit on a couch with I guess your in-laws and then watch all of it like transpire. So apparently there were three kind of scenarios that would happen on the show. They would either choose the parents choice and break up with, and then basically the significant other, the current significant other would get mad and like have to leave. Sometimes the, the, the person would use the opportunity to break up with their current boyfriend and not go with the new person yep. and just become single but, which they could have done from they the start. They could have done it and not been on the show. <laughs> they could and have just been like, yeah, you know what? It says, in the rare occasion, the child's chosen date would reject them and go with their previous significant other. Another rare occasion had the child's chosen boyfriend or girlfriend break up with them right away, leading the angry parent to chase after them on the show. So, Whoa. <laughs> uh, that is so. That's just one. That was parental control. That was a out, gold one. I'm going to throw out some other names to you. See if you remember some of these. The Real World. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was obviously big. I mean, that was like the first kind of like reality show. Yeah, that was like the 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 beginning of 
reality. of the whole of it kicked everything yeah. off because you, you just had cameras on real people Tw- everywhere and then, like here's yeah. here's what what's going to happen basically real world i feel like may might even still exist in some countries um well, maybe you got road rules um i never watched road rules so i don't even know what that really is i don't think so either true life mm-hmm. uh, you got made where made. it was like it was like wasn't that if I recall, wasn't it like somebody wants to be something else, and then yeah. like the show like helps them be that? Like if you were like Basically fat and you're like I want to be skinny and like hot, the show would like help you become skinny and hot, which is probably a terrible message to get across to was, people. Uh, was next on that list? Next that bus is on the list. Where they they had the bus that rolled up, and then it was just like it was filled with like boys or girls. It was, and then it was just like they had to go on these dates, <laughs> they were like weird dates, and then. If you at the end of the date, they either like are like they get like at any point in the date, the person could say next, next, and they're done. Like it's over. The person just has to leave, and then the new person comes into the date. Oh, it was was right on the spot. Yeah, you got all waiting there, being like, "Oh man, I wonder." Oh, they would always talk all the shit to each other too. Yeah. Oh, it was incredible. There was punked. Um, you know, one of the one of the classic prank shows. The best part of, I mean, well, first off, with all these shows, you're always like, how much of this is fake? And, like, most of it's probably fake. But with Punk, there was a couple where you're like, oh, man, this person is legit freaking out. Because, like, they would be like, all right, uh, we're going to take your car. Well, because they wouldn't, like, sign the releases beforehand. (laughs) Right, right, right. After, yeah. (laughs) Exactly. They'd be like, we're going to throw your car into this river and, like, see how you act. (laughs) It's it's like, like, what do you think? It's like, prank. It's a prank. My, My car is destroyed. And then they remade it. Are you heading out? All right, bye. Bye. Bye, Ashley. It's what? Um, Do I need to cover the chairs? Okay. And then uh and then there was Wild Boys, uh oh, Steve Wild Lowe Boys and yeah. uh and uh, Chris, Chris yeah. Pontius. Um Pimp My Ride. Oh dude, I must famous have, so show. when I DVR'd stuff, I would have every episode of Pimp My Ride. It was you had to watch it. And meanwhile, the funniest thing is reading all these articles about like all the people who like first of all, after the show. Oh, that was a loud did you hear that thunder? That was thunder? Yeah. I thought that was like one of the dogs. No. Um with Pin My Ride, like you read about the apparently like they would do this stuff to the cars and then the show would like remove all this stuff and like leave afterwards. Like it's not like people got to keep the stuff in the cars a lot of the time. <laughs> and, so, and some of them did. And then the, the whole thing was too, was um, the, the cars were basically ruined. Like undrivable. And like, there's no way they would pass inspections. <laughs> well, that's a, that was like part of the thing is they're like, yeah, I love the ride. Um, as soon as I had an issue, on the car because like the car became 90 percent maybe because there was like stereos <laughs> maybe because it was, maybe because there were 10 screens all looping exhibits rap videos 100%. and that's the only thing they would ever play or like uh i love how they like imagine the guy there's one episode i remember where this dude uh he's getting his like they do the pre-thing interview and right. exhibit is like interviewing the guys like yeah so like what do you do and the person's like, oh, you know, I just I do, you know, this and that. And he's like, what do you do for fun? Like, sometimes I bowl with my buddies, but I'll go to bars and stuff. And he hones in on the bowling with the his bowling. friends part. Yeah. And then, like, they show him the car, you know, 80 TV screens that only play exhibit. Um, it's got underlighting, all this crazy stuff. He's like, wait for it. And he opens the trunk. And instead of trunk space, it is literally a rack that rolls out. The bowling ball right, comes right. out. And it has like a bowling ball <laughs> polish kit and stuff. And it's like, and there's a TV and it's like, okay. So the guy's like, oh, it, no, no. I prefer to, I like going to the bowling alley. Like I like this, that experience. I'm not going to bowl in my driveway with my car. It's a casual bowler, like right. not even that much. And he has a built-in custom bowling ball cleaning kit device in his trunk. It was insane. And he's just like, like you can see his face. He's like, oh, it's, it's awesome. And then he just like, that's all he would say. And I was like, that dude hates this car. I like the idea of the show just packing up, everybody leaving, and then like the person just being stuck there with their new car, like whether they like it or not. Them just oh, being there well, like, that's the whole thing. It's oh. like, you can't undo it. <laughs> no. And like, they would just do the craziest stuff to it. And then there was a, I saw an article where like they literally couldn't sell the cars, like oh, not yeah. even as novelty. It was just like, no one wanted to buy that car. 
And once, you know, wait two years and every single piece of electronics in that car is like, I mean, think about the battery outdated. that it must use, like sucked oh from God. the car's battery. <laughs> you have to keep <laughs> the car plugged I mean, in. They've got like Xboxes with like five screens and then like giant stereos in the trunk. It was, it was the wildest show. It is like a prime example. They're like, they're like, oh, you got this piece of shit car that you have to yeah. push around town is like. Okay, don't worry. And it's like instead of just fixing the car, which we're gonna I put a basketball yeah. hoop in it. <laughs> you like <laughs> that, basketball? Guess what? Your I, car's a basketball court now. I don't want unfolds. it to be. It's like I would just want my car to like run well and like. Can you, you imagine know? if a guy was just like, I, I like, I like soup. And yeah. there's like, <laughs> say no more, dog. And it's just sponsored by Campbell's. It's we just got a giant you. soup can full of now soup, and they're soup like, you can drive the this. Time. <laughs> Yeah, it it's was... just, I, I mean, I love it. I watched every episode oh, religiously, absolutely. but it's just the most bonkers, like the amount of money that they had to spend on that. And the best part was like, sometimes they'd get a car and they'd open it up and they'd be like, no, nah, we can't fix this. Yeah. And then they would just buy a new car. Right. Because they look at the original it. car and be like, oh, we can't do all this stuff to this car because, you know, it's a regular car. So we're going to go buy buy another car. And then put a bunch of crazy stuff in it. And it's like, oh, I didn't. No, no. Now I have to pay more for insurance and like all this other stuff. Like, please I don't love, do like, that. Like, uh, and some of the some of the stuff they did, like they, I mean, their crew is obviously like great mechanics, but like right. they'd have the paint guy. I want to talk and, to the guys that work. And they'd have the ride. wheel guy who's like, so what'd you do? And he's like, I put new wheels on the car. Yeah. And, it's, and he'd just be like, like why? Why'd you yeah. do that? This is a brand new vehicle. I don't think you need to put new wheels on yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely nuts. I really want to go back. And I want them to put it on Netflix or something. Yeah, and why? I, can I just wonder why. Binge. I wonder why oh, I'm not able to find a lot of these shows. Uh, oh, that, was, that was such great TV. And Big then you fan. got... Uh, my super sweet sixteen didn't watch a ton of that, but I like know of it. I remember like seeing clips oh, yeah, every yeah. now and then. That know? was a buck wild show too, because like I remember there was one where this uh, it basically was like what these parents would shell out fifty grand for a sweet sixteen part for a sweet sixteen. Yeah, and um, she was like they basically had it on this lake, and she was supposed to come in on a boat from the other side. <laughs> And like slowly come through and like it started raining. And so oh, she just no. like said like the worst things to her parents. Right. Being, like because it's their fault that it's raining. Oh, yeah. And it was just like some, Let's of, that, take the some most of that crap was insane. Privileged and entitled kids at the peak of privilege and entitlement age, 16 years old. Oh, yeah. And and shell 50 grand on. And it was always it would always turn into some drama. It would always be like something goes oh, yeah. wrong and the kid freaks out or they it's don't like, like their dress. Why'd you invite Jimmy? Like and they're just all this like, stuff. well, now she has to deal with Jimmy being invited. And like My super sweet 16. Unbelievable. Oh, and then I the last one, the last one I have here is obviously I'd say one of the most interesting times of reality television, the Jersey Shore, mm. which I have... I, I'm not afraid to say it. I've seen like almost every episode of Jersey Shore. I've seen a lot. I didn't watch it as much. Not like the most recent stuff. I haven't seen really like when now they're like Mike's out of prison and like but looks like he has like, plastic surgery. They were like two years where it was like the early show. They season, basically sure. were just like catapulted from like just not great human beings to like right. pinnacle celebrities. Like I mean, had they own Mike, businesses. Was it like Mike six pack? Mike whatever. the situation. Mike the situation. Yeah. If he, if he like made like a showing at a club, if you just walk through that club would just like make a million. He would always dollars. pull up his shirt and show off the six pack. Yeah. You had Ronnie, yeah. um, just okay. gigantic dude who like, there was a lot of drama in the past like five years. Cause I think like there was a domestic stuff and it wasn't him. It was the girl mm -hmm. like beating him up. Yep. Uh, recently, and then there was Sammy Sweetheart because Sammy and Ronnie had the had the drama. Mm -hmm. Um, you had Jay Wow, you had Snooky, of course. Um, you had uh, and uh, and then you also Snooki had Vinny. Was literally just a giant drunk meeple. bitch. She's a meeple. Whole... <laughs> she, uh, she was. She was. You had uh, Vinny and Polly D, um, who, who had like the bromance that every everybody loved. Uh, no, that show it was. You're, it's one of those shows where you ask yourself while you're watching it, why am I watching this? But you, but can't you stop. also can't stop. You you're can't. just watching these Italians who like are the worst representation of Italian culture. Uh huh. Oh yeah, it was bad. 
Drink. Yeah, Gui- was it they called it Guido culture or whatever? Yeah, whatever yeah. That was yeah. Jim tanning laundry, GTL. They would mm-hmm. GTL all the time, um, and they would just and they worked at a at a t shirt shop, which That's was the funniest was. thing because part of the agreement <laughs> was uh, part of the agreement, at least according to the show, for them to be able to live in this house was they had to work at this t shirt shop. Meanwhile, they would never show up to work at the t shirt no. shop. I've never. They, there's barely any clips of them actually working. And then when they do show up, it's always late and they're hung over. And then the guy, the white guy that's like running the shop, is always like, "Why are you late?" And they're like, "I don't know. Maybe because this entire show is based on them partying. Like, what do you, is the show just going to be them working at the t-shirt shop? Like, is that going to be the show? Because it was insane. There would be fights. There was like all the drama about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, the best part was always Vinny always saying, "Cabs are here." That was always, I still say that sometimes when the cabs yeah, would be outside. Yeah. The best was they would literally uh, bring girls back, you know, hook up with them, and then like immediately call cabs for them to oh, leave. Oh yeah, they just gone. And then that was just the, that was what would happen. That show, I mean, there's real world for sure, which is like obviously one of the the mm-hmm. the grandfathers of the reality world movement. But I feel like Jersey Shore took things to a whole different level. Oh, that was like a, we call it like the, that was the zeitgeist at the time. Like that was the pinnacle, like it, like it, it had started there, but that was like one of the biggest peaks in reality TV was like, it was short. It, you could call it a peak. You could also call it sure. you know, <laughs> the opposite of a peak, I guess. Well, it was like, like a, all anyone talked about for two years. Was it Jersey was short. incredible. It was incredible. I, I, I will say to this day, I love at least the first, Two or three seasons of the Jersey Shore. Then there oh, was that yeah. season where they went to Italy. Yeah, which was that insane. was weird. And Mike like slammed his head into the wall and he had to wear a neck brace for the rest of the time because he like strained his neck. I mean, just the weirdest stuff. And then it was like Jay Wow had these different boyfriends. There was Roger that she was with for a long time, uh, who's just this gotcha. buff dude. Oh my God. I could talk about Jersey Shore all day, all day. Uh, I we but should make a Jersey Shore podcast. I would love to do a rewatch of the Jersey Shore podcast. That I would, actually would be pretty fun. I, I would love that. Um, yeah, I'd be in. I'd be in. So let's pitch. Let's, 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 uh, Let's do our own little TV pitching here. It's been a while since we've done one of these. It's Pilot House, people. It's back. Like I said, every now and then we'll bring back some of the old school segments. And right now it's Pilot House where we pitch some TV show ideas. We figured why not. We're talking television. So Salty Dalton, I've got two. Do you do you even have one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We <laughs> sort of we sort of almost accidentally accidentally said it. Okay, said it. Yeah. So, um, well, let me give one, and then I'll then you give yours, and then I'll give my second okay, one. I swear to God, if it's the same one, I'm taking credit. Okay, so I've got two. Um, one of them has to do with something we talked about earlier too, um, but I don't think it's the same thing. So one show it was this is this is my worst idea. This is not my worst ever, but the worst of the two. Um, and I just thought of it because I was at a, getting my hair cut. But my show is called Barbershop, and the show is a prank show where oh, okay. people come in for haircuts, and the barbers <laughs> always give them it up. terrible haircuts, and then you just oh, record how they react. God, that would actually be... It's sort of like that... Uh, isn't there a show where it's like uh, the someone picks the tattoo for somebody else? And, oh yeah there is something like and then that. like they i remember there's one where like these two had just started dating <laughs> and he like they they pulled the thing off and it was a a, a ball and chain oh on, yeah on i remember calf, this yeah and on the ball was her name incredible and it was like a big tattoo incredible and he lost it so we give so now you get the terrible haircut Maybe the show like gives them money or something for it, or not. I want to say they're, 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 it's it's kind of a fine line because it's like hair also grows back, right? So right. Like so that's they can why it's be not... upset, but exactly. only for a couple of months. But it's just funny because the whole show is based around like this this barber being an expert or something like that. Where like, oh no, well, we're like bringing a pop in... up barber shop. They yeah, have, it's like, like a, a pop up bers- like say this guy's the most famous barber shop in like uh, barber in Italy or something like that. And then like, he just gives you the worst haircut ever. Oh, you just and, have to do like a little bit of publicity outside the pop-up yeah. shop and be like all this, like professional graphics done and stuff and be like, have like clips of him. And maybe even hire him. actors to go oh, to yeah. the barber shop, get their haircut and come out and the haircut looks great. Amazing. Like, and then, so that's in- why. Incredible. So, or like a celebrity, you, you get a celebrity involved. So that is one idea. Um, so that is uh, 
That is uh, Barbershop. Like that. That's actually okay. pretty funny. All right. Okay. 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 I'm glad. I'm glad that you didn't hate that one. I'd like so to. Like, hear I yours. mean, like, so are we talking like it would just be because they can sort of see what's happening. Is it one of those situations where they just face them towards the wall? There's no yeah. mirror. Something and so because and it's a pop up, it's not all fully set up for like okay, with mirrors perfect. everywhere and, so and stuff like that. They're just in a chair getting their hair cut. How about they and they're don't see yeah. all the hair fall? They don't. Be, they're not able to see themselves until the haircut's done, basically. What I would love is like someone who has like really long hair, like, and they're just like, yeah, just a little trim, just a little, and then like they hear the buzzer, and then just <laughs> a huge line off the back, and then just seeing what would happen because oh. it's like also like if that happened to you, would you ask them to stop immediately? No, I'd go with it because I'm just. That's what I'm saying. It's like at that point, but also at that point, like, I'm like I guess leave. I'm wearing a hat for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna leave the barbershop with a skunk line. Down the center of my head, I'd just be like, "Well, he's. Let's just see. Let's see how this plays out." He must know what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, that's my one of my show ideas. Barbershop. Okay. All right, what do you got? Uh, so mine is like a almost like a reality TV show. Okay. Um, and so there's two different ideas inside of this one. So basically, like we've chronicled on the Random Word podcast my time spent in the customer service industry. Right. Uh, right. But more specifically, Classic. my one of my first jobs at Hallmark. Yes. And all the wild stuff that went down. And Love. this is at a Hallmark Love. in the a Hallmark shopping stars. center tucked away in like Next a to little like a part frozen of yogurt. Reston. Yeah. Like it's not even like, you know, there it's, you know, the, the Hernan, it's not like run down gang activity, but yeah, like the amount nice. of crazy stuff that has happened to me there. Um, <laughs> basically, um, it can go one of two ways. One, basically each season focuses on, um, it's basically like a, a Jersey Shore type thing where it's just like, you do all the interviews like a Parks and Rec type thing where right. it's like all these people who work there. The oh, so it's for Hallmark. It, but for that store. Okay. And it's just like cameras 24 seven. You see all the interactions. You see all this crazy stuff. Because now funny, the world's even not... crazier from when you were there. So mm-hmm. like, I mean, people are even like weirder now. So you oh, know I, I that it's and gotten like, even if, weirder. If I had caught even half of those things right. on camera and then they pull you into the back room and do the little like interview where you comment on what just happened. Oh, yeah. So either do that, stick with like a store or basically just do like a different store each episode where oh. it's like you give these people identities in like in a reality world setting and you just follow around their work for the week. And see if you get anything interesting. And I think it'd just be really funny to have. Imagine like being a, the camera guy for like a Hallmark saying. documentary series or whatever. Or, or like a reality it, show. It's basically like a like a crappy. It's basically like The Office. Um, but real. The Office, the real world, and whatever, all like crammed in. So like you can go with them, and you know you follow their story. God, the like editing, the, the editing interviews. for shows like that must be insane oh, because you be. get so much footage. And half of it is just nothing. Nothing. Like nothing of interest. What? But, what? Did you think of a name for the show? Um, I haven't yet. I. Oh, maybe because you just can't like, use Hallmark, probably, because that's unless because I my guess is, well, I guess Hallmark would have to sign off on this. Maybe work, and, and it just be W space O space R K. Just Ooh, work. That's kind of cool. Jeez, just, I didn't realize yeah, you were like a that, freaking uh, California, cool. LA yeah. d- designer here. Because work. then it would just be like, it would just be that or just called working. And you just turn it on and it's I mean, just people working. That's a great, like, that's not even, I'm not even going to lie. Like, that's a pretty darn good idea. Um, I think it'd be funny because, like, you, you probably catch enough stuff if you set up for like a week at a time where you'd get a yeah. few funny interactions. But just like interviewing, like, you would just show up there. See if they're willing to do it. Get all the form signed, and then you just you just talk to them and do this sidebar right. like things. They're just like, yeah, I like I, I didn't think that customer is going to punch me straight in the mouth, and like, <laughs> and then it just like fast forwards to like the actual clip. Because people it. like forget that small like shops like that experience the weirdest stuff because oh, yeah. it doesn't happen. It's not like it's like super a lot of people traffic and you're getting stuff all the time but it's more of if you just record it over a span of time you're gonna get some weird stuff every now and then in that span of time because there's just weird people Mm -hmm. and like weird people go to places like hallmark you know like any of those small shops oh like literally it doesn't even have to be a big chain right you know they've done like 
uh, what is it like uh, employee of the month, Dane Cook, where they basically were at that oh, Costco. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it was yeah, sort yeah. of like you see all the stuff that happens behind the scenes. And like yeah, just one of those like small places yeah. and just like re- any sort of it's always that weird thing where just daily life sometimes is just like it's entertaining enough where oh, you would yeah. watch it, especially when it's edited in, in the right way. Oh, you know? it, it would be way funnier because you would cut out all the unnecessary boring parts that come I like with it. working. Yeah. I like it. I like it. So that is uh, work or working. I mean, that's a great freaking name. I'm not even going to lie. Like, that's probably one of the brilliant things you've come up with. Um, My second one real quick is real simple. It's called, I don't know why it's called this, but it's called Holy Rollers. And it's a documentary series on a neighborhood bowling league. So it's like one of those sports documentaries. It's filmed uh, super high quality. Oh, like that would actually okay. Yeah. I'm on board. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Because yeah, yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah. like hard knocks esque, where it's like very high quality cameras. It's literally hard knocks, but it's just a local ball. It's a neighborhood team. bowling league. So you follow the teams. You follow like you have the ones. So you would root this be for. would this be a uh, sort of the same real life type thing, or is this like a scripted? No, no, this is Go. this is real life. This is real life. I think both would be hilarious. So you follow a season, a, a bowling league season, and you're just dot like like for example, Amazon has a lot of documentaries um for were for soccer teams, like Premier League teams, and it basically like chronicles yeah, their like whole Ted season. Lasso too, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, well that's a fiction show. But uh and it chronicles their season. Mm-hmm. This would be that for a neighborhood bowling league. So you know all the teams, that you is know an all the people. Market. Yeah. If you had the high quality setup and editing capability, you could turn something like that into probably one of the most famous TV because shows. Because you know there's like weird casting characters. Like there's the old timers that have been in the league forever. There's the there's ones... going to be people who hate being on camera. Right. Who don't oh, yeah. want to do it, but have to but do But have it. to. I mean, there's going to be the people that drink pitchers of beer at these bowling league events tanked. and yeah. stuff and get tanked and talk it's crap like to the, the other audience team. or the people milling around. You would just look at, like, watch, watch it. It would be... Happening. I just feel like a, like a small town neighborhood bowling league would be a very entertaining documentary series. I don't know why it's called Holy Rollers. Uh, so when you said Holy <laughs> Rollers, I was literally like, "Is it a church group that?" It's maybe? not. I don't. It, holy has nothing to do with it. I just uh, for some reason I like the sound of Holy Rollers. So that's the name of the show. <laughs> it works. No, so I, that's I, that's my documentary series. Have you been thinking about bowling a lot recently? No, which is the oh, weird okay. thing. <laughs> but for say, some reason, like, it came to mind to get into it because we don't can know. do that. It came to mind. It came to There's mind. There's FXA uh, leagues we can do. Oh, oh, did you? You got to get that. It says unknown number, though. Yeah, you still got to answer it, though. That's the government rule. Hello, Random Word Podcast. Oh, oh sorry, it's call you got center. Me again. It's call center, my good people. And actually, really we have to save that number because it's the same thing every time. You should. You should save it, but it's always a, it's always a different. Uh, person at the other end i guess i don't i don't know what i'm saying um so we have three emails but they're all from the same person salty dalton (laughs) um this is from our pal ricky frame (laughs) and this is in response to a discussion we had last week on the show uh, ricky listened all right way to be ricky so the first email says ben i couldn't help but wonder can you confirm the time you record you recorded your 511 and a half height wasn't in fact in the morning when you're the tallest as you guys described. So this goes back to our discussion about how in the morning you're at your tallest. Yep. And I had said that I currently am 5'11 and a half. Ricky seems to be claiming that the 5'11 and a half was recorded in the morning and that I'm actually shorter. He says, perhaps your peak is in fact 5'11. Uh, your peak is in fact 5'11 and a half and your height in the afternoon and evening is 5'10 and a half. Oh wow, that's a whole inch worth of shrinkage. So he's claiming that I'm lo- that I'm well, actually do you have five, a, ten and a half. Do you have a measuring tape nearby? Measuring tape, not near me. Um, he 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 follows up. This was a separate email. He followed up with. He said another thing. Doesn't the human body shrink in height as you get older? Ben's not getting any younger. Possible his peak morning height is just plain old five eleven now. So he's claiming that. I am not 5'11 and a half that I'm that I've shrunk because I've gotten older and now I'm 5'11 is his claim. Interesting. And his okay. last email says last one. He's really zeroing in on the fact that <laughs> he does not believe this that you're that tall. This is three separate emails. He said okay. last one. They make platform shoes for women and Elton John. I think. <laughs> Maybe you can see if they have some in your size to solidify your presence in the six foot club. And I just emailed him back, and I, all I said was, hey, how about you get back to work? Um, 
because the guy's sending three emails in the middle of the workday. Uh, we should probably talk to his employer. Um, Have you ever considered wearing platform shoes? No, because I don't need to. I'm 5'11 and a half. I'm probably six foot in the morning. I shrink down to 5'11 and a half because of my bones, like we discovered on the last episode. Sure, sure. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, inf- that information of being 5'11 and a half. He seems to be claiming that I'm like 5'10, which is just not the case. You know what's weird is like when you're younger you view the height as such like a so i used to i used to basically um the equivalence of like a certain height i would just consider adult so like right, if someone right. was like a certain height they i'd be, be like an adult. Well, they're clearly an adult and right. they're they're much older and whatnot it's weird i don't really think about how tall people are anymore unless you see somebody no. like gigantic everyone's sort of just Everyone around the same, the same height yeah they do which is weird <laughs> They're, like unless like, you're watching like an NBA game, everybody's sure. like the same height. They are, and I it, it's it's weird to think about it that way. I'm just kind of like, why does everyone make a, such a big deal? Well, about it's the same it? thing. Where like I also grew like a foot and a half in like two years. I used to be. Oh, did I did I show you the baseball card of me? I don't think so. Okay, so we found was it a the high school one. No, no, this oh. was uh, this was middle school. Uh, it was okay. one of the, the, I forget what it was, but Herndon did like, you probably have some from the Herndon, because I I you played Herndon, not Reston. Right, right, right. Um, and so I did Herndon too, and they had these little baseball cards made for some of the, the younger teams. Oh. And I remember it had like stats and stuff on there. And literally, <laughs> I'm like 12, right. or probably 12 or 13, four, six, and, okay. four and like six. 80 pounds. Yeah. 80 pounds. Okay. And then... When I was, when when we enter high school at the end of fourteen, yeah, 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 we were turning fifteen, right, something like that, and I, I shot up to literally the height I am now. And then you've just been there steady the rest of the yeah. time. So I went from like four six to five ten. Growing so weird because like, I remember going to the doctor because my feet are so big, right? And uh, so huge, I remember humongous. going to the doctor back Actually, in the day. I literally, I just told Ashley about this the other day. What, what do you mean you told was. Ashley about this the other day? About well, what? So there's a guy in our neighborhood who asked me to download the Nike app. And that's why I had it, because I asked right. if you wanted me to put in for the shoes for you. Yeah. Because I'll put in for shoes for him sometimes. Sure. Because he needs extra people trying to get it. Right. And he has, like, pretty large feet, like 12, 13. And I was just, and Ashley was like, she's like, oh, my God, are people's feet, like, that big? And I was like, we well, should, you should <laughs> no. shoe sizes. <laughs> And she's I mean, like, what do you we need? And I was like, what are you, size 15? Uh, yeah, yeah, around there, right around there. Yeah, and so <laughs> and she's like, do they even make those? And I was like, yes, they make story them. Is they do, but like, they're really not that common. Like, you could go into a store and it's either they have them because no one's ordered them or they just don't keep them in stock. It actually kind of ends up helping me a lot of the time because when yeah, I'm competing... Yeah, you can get really awesome shoes yeah. because no one... The only person challenging for that is probably Shaq. Well, no, Shaq's like size 20 or something. But look, size 15. That's the whole thing, though. I, I got tricked. You because stitched my, two shoes together? No. My doctor would say, like, oh, his feet are so big. He's going to probably be like 6'4". And then, like, of course, my eyes light up. And I think, like, NBA. Oh, oh yeah. Like, Absolutely so dunk it on them. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be I'm gonna be really, really tall. And then at some point, like, like it was like I, I didn't keep growing. And my feet were still big. And so I don't know what now I'm just... At five eleven and a half, probably close to six feet, but you know, well, who knows? depends when you. I, I'm sort of on Ricky's side of it. Maybe I think what you should do is take off your shoes and measure your height. Have Abby measure you with the tape measure tomorrow morning. Well, do I hold it underneath my heel? Yeah. Okay. That's heel, exactly heel, right. heel to dome, and heel have her dome. have her tell you exactly. I'll tell you this. Do you have a tape measure in your house? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've measured stuff. Okay, what I need you to do is go get that measure and put it next to your bed. And when you guys wake up in the morning, that is the first thing I want you to do. First thing in the morning, measure myself with the tape measure. Uh, Okay, I'll think about it. You should. You should do it. I mean, otherwise, everything you say is going to be a lie. So, I mean, I was at the doctor when I had strep and like, or yeah, when I had strep. What was the height they recorded? Uh, you know, I gotta look at the receipts. Check. They handed me a bunch of receipts. The receipts? Yeah, they put your height weird. on the receipts. No, they did. did. You go to, did you go to urgent a, care? Yeah, it was a bunch oh, of receipts. Okay. They, actually <laughs> do, like, they actually do put that on. It was a CVS. <laughs> like, what are you I, talking I got, about? For the when I went there when I broke my rib and got my concussion, actually, the con- both times the concussion from the bachelor party. Oh right, right, right. 
Um, it's like, don't you guys have regular printers? They give you the receipt and it like has a bunch of stuff. And then it says like concussion. And then it gives yeah. you the, like the symptoms. And then but what it's you all written in like it. receipt language. It, it's so it looks like a CVS receipt and they just hand it to you. It's like, did they, did the, did the, it's like, here you go. This is what's wrong with you. Did the place like used to be a restaurant <laughs> and then it's converted into, cause it does have like the roof of like a uh, pizza order hut. of strep. <laughs> it's like, it's so weird. It's like, and they, they give it to you in like six pieces of paper because it's like six receipts <laughs> and you're like uh, what am i supposed to do with this i'd like to return to return the item please uh it's uh but yeah oh, okay okay i will try and find out my exact height so that way i can report it and ricky can be put in his place for making fun of my height. or or validate ricky um i don't think that's going to be the case i think it's going to be five eleven and a half maybe even six foot i bet ricky shrunk he's older than i am and he's going bald so he's he's oh, definitely he throw some extra jabs he, in there huh he's definitely I expect at least four more emails to roll in as soon as he's definitely shorter he's he's getting shorter for talking about people shrinking i mean the guy's like 55 or something so part of me wonders if like the people getting shorter is because like they're like you know hunching over maybe it's possible we can look it feels that. weird that you would like shrink over time but it happens. It happens. I, I mean, guess. Uh, trust me. You, 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 you. It happens. I've seen it. I've seen. I've seen like somebody older like shrink. It's, it's weird, man. They don't get this small, but it's weird. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk my grandma. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Oh what man, happens. we should we should rewatch that movie too. We need to Honey, do some I rewatching on the show in general. We should. We should do some live commentary on some we'll of these shows. And maybe TV some Twitch shows. stuff. Uh, unless like that means we'll get banned because we're doing live stuff i don't know we'll figure it out um this has been another episode of the random word podcast the tv show cast hope you learned something today hope you uh came away with some information about i already forgot the i already forgot the watch company name boulevard (laughs) boulevard of broken dreams watch company (laughs) um that is salty dalton belova 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 um i am ben follow the show email the show if you want to get your email on call center the random word blog podcast. Oh, no, blog. it's the random word blog at gmail. Random word blog podcast. The gmail. random word blog. Yeah. The random word blog. Uh, you can at enter gmail. in promo code RWP <laughs> and it won't do anything. No, but next episode, I think, with the downloads, because you had to get a certain download number to start being able to use the anchor app. Are people app. still downloading the show? Yeah, yeah, they are actually, which is oh, kind of nice. wild. Um, Sick. So now with this episode. <laughs> I believe next week you'll be here our first anchor ad. So we'll have to talk about that and, fi- and okay. record a little anchor cool. ad. But do you want me to do the copy? No, we'll do it together. Oh, okay. I just yeah. feel like I'm sort of like the copy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you are. <laughs> you're, you're something. Um, that is salty talk. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? <laughs> you'll find out next next episode. Uh, this has been the TV show cast. We'll see you guys. Uh, <laughs> I was ran- say, like, this oh, has been what? our TV show. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how do I end this show? I remember. Sayonara, my sweet, sweet suckers. We outie.